When working with GraphQL subscriptions, one of the most common use cases and scenarios that comes up is the need to filter these real-time subscriptions and notifications coming in based on some type of argument. Now, if you think of a very common use case like a chat application or a messaging app, you might think of something like being within some type of room and you only want the real-time messages to come in for that room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out this functionality using Amplify and AppSync, and you're gonna see that it's actually pretty easy to do using this combination of technologies. We're gonna build out the front end using React. We're gonna to listen to that message coming in on the, on the client. And we're also going to test this out in the service using the uh, AWS AppSync console. And we're gonna deploy all this stuff using Amplify. So this is gonna be kind of a pretty short video. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope that you learned something from it. And on that note, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a new React app. And while that is creating, we will go ahead and um, initialize a new Amplify project within that folder. So I'll run Amplify init and go ahead and initialize our back end here. All right, so um, as the backend is deploying, we will go ahead and install the AWS Amplify client libraries into the React app. And then after the backend has been uh, has finished deploying, we will then add the GraphQL API. So I'll go ahead and run yarn add AWS Amplify to add the Amplify client libraries. And it looks like our backend has been deployed. So now I can run Amplify Add API to add the GraphQL API. So we'll just choose some basic default authorization scenario here, public access with API key. We'll choose um, you know, some basic configuration here. We don't need any advanced settings. Um, I don't have an annotated schema, so we'll just go ahead and use one of the boilerplates so we'll choose single object with fields for a to-do app, and then we'll choose yes to go ahead and edit the schema now. And this should go ahead and open the schema in our text editor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a message type that's gonna have an ID, a message, and we're gonna have a room ID. And the room ID is what we're gonna be using as the subscription argument. Now to create this subscription argument, all we need to do is go ahead and create uh, another definition for a subscription. And we can define that subscription here. So I'm going to say something like on create by room ID. And this is going to take in a room ID as an argument. And that's going to be a string. And that's going to return a message. Now, this is um, defining our subscription. Now to actually make this work, all we really need to do is to add another uh, line, which kind of tells AppSync the array of subscriptions we would like, I'm sorry, the array of mutations we would like to subscribe to. And um, if you go to the AppSync docs under using subscription arguments, or you go into the Amplify docs, we also have an example there, you'll see that all we need to do is add this annotation or this directive called at AWS underscore subscribe, passing in array, uh, array of mutations. So, I'll go ahead and do that here. And the mutation that we want to listen to in this case is gonna be on create a message, basically. Um, so the mutation actually is gonna be create message, but it's basically gonna be like on creating a message. So when a message is created. So we'll say create message. And because we're using this at model directive, Amplify is gonna generate all of the CRUD operations for us. So we're gonna have create, read, update, delete. So the three mutations that we're gonna have out of those CRUD operations are create, update, and delete. So create message, update, and delete message. So we could really listen to any of those, those mutations for any type of real-time updates. But in this case, we're only worried about uh, create message. So this all looks pretty good. We have our room ID, um, we're listening to create message, and we should be good to go. So if I go back to my terminal and I run amplify push, 
this should go ahead and deploy our, um, our backend. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna open up our React app and we are going to go ahead and implement the listening for this subscription on the client. Um, so we need to do two things. First of all, we need to go ahead and um, configure our Amplify app using, um, I'm sorry, our React app to use Amplify. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the Amplify library. We're gonna imp uh, import this AWS exports file. We're gonna call it config. And then we're gonna call amplify.configure passing in the config. Uh, next, we're gonna go to app.js. And I think to kind of listen to this um, update, we might use something like the use effect hook in React. So this is gonna basically allow us to call a function when the component loads. So I'll go ahead and import use effect. I'll also import the API class from AWS Amplify. And this is gonna be the GraphQL client that we're gonna be using. And then in our function, we can call use effect. And what we might do here is basically, we want to um, go ahead and call some function. So the function that we're gonna have is called subscribe. And to kind of display this information in our app, we might use something like use state because we might take this message and kind of display it as it comes through. So I might say const message, um, update message is equal to use state passing in something like null, uh, null to start off with. And then we now have this subscribe function that we need to create. And subscribe is gonna be calling our GraphQL API. So I can now use the API client um, or the API GraphQL client. I can say api.graphql. And here we're gonna pass in the GraphQL operation. And in our case, that's gonna be something like on create uh, by room ID. And let's go back to our CLI now because we should see that Everything has been deployed, and this means that not only has our back-end code been deployed, but the CLI has created some front-end code. So if we go now into this GraphQL folder here, we should see that we have this on create by room ID. So that's what we're gonna use. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and import that. So I'm gonna go ahead and import on create by room ID. And this is gonna be from GraphQL slash subscriptions. And the query is gonna be this on create by room ID. And now I can call dot subscribe. And here we can set a next function, which is gonna fire anytime some data comes in from a subscription. And then this is gonna basically gonna be our um, data here. So I might call this message data. And for now, Let's go ahead and console.log this message data. And later on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, update our state with this, but let's take a look at what this data looks like. Um, and what else do we need to, to pass in here? Because right now we're just listening to all of the subscription operations for any message, right? We need to pass in the variable. So what we can do is we can say variables here and what we want to do is pass in the room ID. And if we look at our subscription definitions, you'll see that we have this room ID argument. The room ID is going to be some, uh, some ID. So let's come up with an ID that we're going to use. So we'll say we want our room ID to be like 001. Okay, so we have this going. Um, let's go ahead and create some basic user interface. So we're just going to kind of like clear out some of the stuff that we're given by React. And we might say, if there is a message, then let's show like an H1 with the current message, whatever that is. So there is no message now, so this is just not gonna show up anything, right? But at least we have that ready for, for when we're ready to use it. So we'll go ahead and run NPM start. And then um, while that's starting, let's go ahead and test this out in the service itself. So what I'm gonna say is amplify console API, and this should go ahead and allow us to open up the GraphQL API. So we have the API um, opened up here. So the way that we can test this out is we can actually open up like two browser windows, right? So I'll open up one here, I'll open up another here, 
and we'll run that subscription in one of these windows. Okay, so I might run that subscription here. I'm gonna look for own create by room ID. I'm gonna pass in the room ID of 001. I'll just return everything. So uh, ID, message, room ID, uh, created at, updated at. So we're running this, this subscription over here. Now let's go ahead and run a mutation over here to see if this works. Go ahead and make that a little smaller. It's a little bigger. So for the input, we want to pass in whatever we want to be there, and we'll just go ahead and return all of the values that we're returning here. So I will say I want the room ID to be, let's start with 002, because this should not work, right? Because we don't, uh, we're not listening to 002 over here. The mutation should work, but the subscription should not. For the message, it's gonna say hello from room two. And um, the ID created and updated at should be auto-populated by this service. So we don't really even have to pass that in. So let's go ahead and try to create a message. Looks like we have everything going there. It doesn't look like it's coming through here, which is what we expect. So let's now create a room, a message in room one. Boom, we see our data is coming through in real time. So now we're subscribed to only messages uh, from room ID one. And if we go to our React app, we should be able to inspect our panel. And if our subscription is working, we will also see some uh, subscription data. So we have all of our data there. So let's go over here and actually uh, run our React app over there. And um, we can now look at this object to see the, the data structure that we need. So we basically need the data.value.data.onCreate by room ID. It's kind of nested all the way down there. So what I can do now is I can go to our code here and I can say update, uh, update message and pass in the message data dot value dot data dot on create by room ID. I'm going to save that. We're not using that. I'll just delete that. But I'll go ahead and save this, and I'll refresh. And um, what what should happen now is um, well, actually, let's start off with something like no message yet. So we don't have a message coming through, so let's go ahead and create um, a new message. And I'll say hello in real time and see what happens. Oh, boom, it looks like something happened. So our message came through, so um, it looks like we have uh, some error though with uh, where we're getting the data. So, Objects are not valid as React child. So it looks like I'm probably um, referencing the wrong piece of data here. So for now, let's go ahead and, and just test this out. Let's create another one. So we have message data dot value dot data dot ohm create by room ID. Uh, looks kind of looks kind of right. Oh, I think I need to say dot message because I'm basically rendering a string. So let me make this a little bigger. Yeah, so I only want to get the message out of there. So let's try that one more time. All right, so hello in real time. And there we go. Hello world again. So we're seeing the updates coming through, and we are now subscribed to only messages for that room ID. Um, if you want to learn more about how this works with AppSync and Amplify, check out the docs. I will link to them in this video. Basically, it's going to be the AWS AppSync docs under real-time data, or you can go to the Amplify docs, 
and you can go to the guides under GraphQL and we have a section on how to create GraphQL subscriptions by ID. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little something about um, you know GraphQL subscriptions and Amplify. Uh, if you're not already, subscribe to my channel and look out for my next video. Thank you.